People say hiking in Nepal is a spiritual experience. We weren't quite sure what to expect, but all we knew is that we were headed off on a 12-day trek that would take us up to our highest altitude yet at over 5,300 meters above sea level. It was going to be a test of our endurance, both mentally and physically. We've arrived and look who's in the bed. Ah, we had nine hours of driving on windy, bumpy roads. And they're about one and a half lanes big. And our seats didn't go back or recline or anything. So we couldn't really sleep. And I am exhausted. And the bed feels great. We decided to add three extra days to the beginning of our trek to avoid flying into one of the world's most dangerous airports. What we had in store for us was truly unexpected. What looked easy on paper ended up being 800 to 1,000 meter days ascending and descending, not making much vertical progress <laughs> at all. Look at your mama. This is Sherpa tea. Um, I guess there's cheese in it or something. <laughs> That's salty. <laughs> I've discovered my breakfast of choice, and that's a chapati, which is a kind of tortilla, a bread tortilla, um, and an omelet. So you can roll it up like this, and you can basically have a wrap in the morning. And I'm really excited about it because I don't like muesli and I don't like porridge. The first three days were very physically demanding and frustrating because we weren't making very much vertical progress. But there were other benefits on the road less traveled. We got to experience a much less developed part of the trail, and it really felt like we were on our own individual journey hiking through the foothills of Nepal. Oh, 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 oh,
You know, Om Mane Padme Hum? Yes. This is kind of mantra, meditation mantra. Oh. This one is Mane. Mane, this one is like a small wall, this Mane. Same like that, but it's carving. Oh. Om Mane Padme Hum. Oh, yes. Masala tea and popcorn. Currently day four and you wake up in the morning and legs are kind of stiff, but we've got an easy day today. And the nice thing about the easy day is that it's an easy day. Legs don't hurt right now, which is nice. I feel like I'm getting over the hump of pain. I'm not at altitude yet, just at 2,500 meters or so. And things are feeling pretty good. Yeah, this is kind of this is your sign from here. Whoa, look at this view. That is the nicest view. We'll see you later. Uh, yeah, good day. Thank you. Welcome. Wow. Oh, it feels good to have our own private bathroom, you know, flushing toilet. Don't have to squat this one out. I'm pretty stoked. Namche. Reaching Namche Bazaar, also known as the Gateway to Everest, is a huge milestone for anyone hiking in the Khumbu Range. You can find everything from hiking poles to chicken wings, so it's a perfect stop to lift your spirits. But as you drink that second beer, remember the saying, don't eat meat after Namche, as it is a sobering reminder that the toughest legs of the trek are still ahead of you. I can't believe it, but uh, we're having sauna. It's the real deal, it's the real deal, it's hot, it's the real deal. How was your hike today? It was really easy. I went up 900 meters from 34, 40 meters up to 41, 10 meters. 
and it was easy for some reason. Way easier than the first three days. Do you think you're getting stronger? Yeah, I also had two coffees this morning, so it could be that. <laughs> what about your massage? It also could be the, the fabulous massage I had in MJ the day before. It was so good. Is this awesome. It's awesome. If you want to join this debate, it's winning. No, it's okay. <laughs> oh my god! Surprise. What? Yeah. You did this. Oh, you're so cute. Have you put it together? Put the table over there. Our little beds, and I put our toiletry bags on there, and the backpacks there, and then our blue bags here. And I was just getting with the Scrabble and the cards right now. Wow. And I was gonna bring you a little. So it's 500 for the walnut chocolate brownie, 450 for the black forest cake, and 500 for the chocolate cake. Sounds like we need to get some money. So what we need to do is eat our lunch and we need to get dessert. <laughs> oh yeah. And, yeah. But it's hard to know, oh my goodness, like, what do we get? Okay, I'm gonna get the black forest cake. I'm gonna get the walnut brownie. Oh, no chocolate cake. Jack, 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 we're getting up at 3.30 in the morning and it's about a two hour hike straight up. And we don't know if we're going to see anything up there, we have no idea what the weather's going to be like and I'm anxious, I hope I get to bed at a good time. I'm, a, I'm nervous about the, the hike down because it might be kind of slippery since it's steep. Too much cheese. <laughs> Dull butt.
Are your hands freezing? Yeah. <laughs> Summiting Gokyo Ri was one of the greatest accomplishments of my life. It was an incredibly rewarding experience. And surprisingly, the reward I received with stepping on that peak was more mental than physical. Chicken sizzler. Wow. It's having that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, really you must. Yeah. Last time we came up there, and now we're going this way. If you fly, you come this way. If you walk, you come this way. Oh, yeah. Amazing. <gasps> Was hiking in Nepal a spiritual experience? Yes, absolutely. As a transient visitor amongst the ancient peaks that towered over me, I began to realize that I had no power or persuasion over the events that would unfold in front of me. Nothing was certain. The only thing that was left was my will. My will to put one foot in front of the other and take what was given to me. This grounding experience makes Nepal one of my favorite countries in the world. How was it? Scary. Yeah? <laughs> I was shaking <laughs> we took off. A little tear in your eye. I couldn't control it. I was because it was shaking so much. It's like a bodily, bodily response. <laughs> but it helps with the music on. Wow, it's hot here. Yeah. 